Good morning and happy Sabbath. I wanted to piggyback off of what uh, Brother Harold was talking about just a while ago. Um, I was part of those people that uh, when they come knocking at your door, I believe I started my journey with Parkwood about four years ago. And uh, I'm grateful for that. But I'm here to encourage and remind not just myself that I'm right where I need to be. Not just in this church, but in life. Whether that's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. That being said, I also need to remind myself, because it was pressed on my spirit this morning, that not every storm is meant to break me. That storm is to soften that soil to plant the seeds I need to plant. And I don't know if you've ever been on a train. And let's just say that train goes into a tunnel. And what happens is the train gets, or the, the train gets really dark. What I'm trying to say is, I don't jump off the train and throw my tickets and jump off the train. I have to trust in the conductor. And I'm saying this because I need to hear it and remind myself that the same way I need to trust that conductor to come out that train or the tunnel is the same way I need to apply those, call it faith, into our most high God. So anyway, I needed to share that. So children, today I'm uh, going to be telling you guys the story of the devil and the duck. There was a little boy visiting his grandparents on their farm. He was given a slingshot to play with out in the woods. He practiced in the woods, but he could never hit the target. Getting a little discouraged, he headed back for dinner. As he was walking back, he saw grandma's pet duck. Just out of impulse, he let the slingshot fly hit the duck square in the head, and killed it. He was shocked and grieved. In a panic, he hid the duck in the wood pile, only to see his sister watching. Sally had seen it all, but said nothing. So after lunch the next day, Grandma said, Sally, Let's wash the dishes. But Sally said, Grandma, Johnny told me he wanted, a, he wanted to help you in the kitchen. <laughs> then she whispered to him, remember the duck. So Johnny did the dishes. Later that day, Grandpa asked that the children wanted to go fishing. And Grandma said, I'm sorry but I need Sally to help me make supper. Sally just smiled and said, well, that's all right, because Johnny told me he wanted to help. She whispered again, remember the duck. So Sally went fishing and Johnny stayed to help. After several days of Johnny doing both his chores, and Sally, he, I'm sorry, after several days of uh, Johnny doing both his chores and Sally's, he finally couldn't stand it any longer, right? He came to grandma and confessed that he killed the duck. Grandma came down and knelt, gave him a big hug and said, sweetheart, I know. You see, I was standing at the window and I saw the whole thing happen. But because I love you, 
I forgave you. I was just wondering how long you would let Sally make a slave of you. See, the purpose of the story is this, kids. That whatever is in your past and whatever you have done and the devil keeps throwing it up in your face, whether it's lying, fear, hatred, anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, and more, whatever it is, you need to know that God was standing at the window and he saw the whole thing. He has seen your whole life. He wants you to know that he loves you and, you, and that you are forgiven. He's just wondering how long you will let the devil make a slave of you. The great thing about God is this, that when you ask for forgiveness, he not only forgives you, but he forgets. It is by God's grace and mercy that we are all saved. So it says, in Psalms chapter 139, verses 1 through 3, it says, O oh Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. Watch this. You are familiar with all my ways. Thank you, kids. That's it. Yeah.